Hi, you guys, I'm Phil Town from Real One Investing, and today I'm gonna to discuss my thoughts on if the market will crash in 2020. The market runs in cycles, for sure. It goes up, it comes back down. We can't tell exactly when the market's gonna go up and when it's gonna go down. We don't know the tops and the bottoms. We get a rough idea because the cycles fall into pretty regular patterns. You know, about every 20 years or so, we have a major market crash and where the market goes down 50% or more. You can see it in a long-term chart. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but like from 1900 to 1920, the market went totally nowhere sideways for 20 years. Then it goes straight up for about seven or eight years. 1929, it crashes. And then the market got back to where it was in 1929 by 1955, so that was 26 years. Then it goes up for another, let's see, 10 years or so. And then it just goes crashing down and went sideways for the next 20 years. And then it goes up, 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 up from 1980 to 2000. And then we've had two major crashes since then. Nobody knows for sure, right? But what we do know is, as Jamie Dimon says, that every five to seven years or so, we have a recession. And the market responds to those in major ways. That's because recessions come about because of too much credit. Right now, we have more credit being extended than we've ever had in history. So some people are thinking we may be looking into the teeth of one of the major market crashes we've ever had. On the other hand, everything seems to be going pretty good right now, so we don't know for sure. We have to look beyond the charts. We have to go beyond just what the cycles show us, right? We have to go and say that, in effect, we can't really predict the stock market. It's by no means any kind of an exact science. The economy reacts to all kinds of things more than the market cycles. When you get a perfect storm, you get events that come together in the world economy, and you get economic conditions coming together, political decisions, then a recession can happen. And for that to happen in the near future, yep, it, yeah, it, it totally could if things go a certain kind of way, or it might not. I honestly don't know. But here's the deal. The important thing is that you understand it's cyclical and it will happen. And so that means you should begin to prepare now for what could happen in the next year. Prepare yourself for a recession. It's gonna work out great for you as an investor. It's been working out great for us for about 30 years. It's been working out great for Warren Buffett for 60 because if we prepare for a recession all the time, in other words, we're always ready for the next rainstorm to go outside and catch the gold that it's raining. You are going to be ready to make money. So either way, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna keep saving aggressively. You're saving whether the market's gonna to continue to go up or not, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna keep saving, 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 saving. You're not gonna necessarily put your money into the stock market while you're saving right now. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be looking to make a good investment. Rule one investors know how to take advantage of all these different kinds of economic conditions, including stock market crashes, because of a simple reason. We're not geniuses. We just are making a list of wonderful businesses and setting the price we wanna pay for them. So let's take a look at a couple scenarios. One where a recession might happen next year in 2020, and one where it won't. It's pretty unlikely. So what would have to happen for there to be a major recession in 2020? Well, whatever way you slice it, 2020 is gonna definitely be an eventful year. We're going to have, let's see, we're gonna have a vote on whether to impeach the President of the United States. That's fairly impactful. Um, we've got China and the U.S. maybe, maybe, maybe not getting into tariff wars. We're going to have a U.S. presidential election and all of the Congress and Senate. We've got definitely some international tension around the world with the United States pressuring our allies and our not-so-allied countries out there. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things going on in the economy that could cause Americans to cut back on their spending. And all of these things could have a huge influence on the market and drive us into a recession. Totally is possible. Right now, tons of companies, I can tell you, because I look at this every day, tons of companies are overvalued. They are priced way, way too high relative to their actual worth. And when that happens, the price of those companies almost always comes falling back to earth sooner or later. We've seen stock market bubbles burst before, right? 
I've seen it happen a number of times in the last 20 years. It could happen again. Many companies have taken on a ton of debt because interest rates were so low. And when that happens, these sneaky little CEOs run out there, borrow a bunch of money and buy their competitors up and make it look like their company's growing when it isn't. It's just getting bigger by acquisition with borrowed money. If interest rates get forced back up or if trade wars push revenues down, Ooh, these companies are going to be so vulnerable to going bankrupt. And when they have a lot of debt, man, it's really easy for them to go chapter 11. That could set off a ripple effect of bad news because people will lose their jobs. When they lose their jobs, that's money they don't spend, which means that's somebody else's job. Man, and when that happens, people don't have money to spend. Meanwhile, politicians may not be able to agree on effective fiscal policy. That means what the Congress should vote on for taxation, right? That might help pull us out of a looming recession before it's too late. So a lot of things there that could throw us into recession. Hmm. Well, although this scenario sounds dire, it doesn't have to happen. Markets just don't crash for no reason. Well, sometimes they do. But they mostly don't crash unless many investors pull their money out of those investments. Well, where else are they going to put their money right now? The market remains the best investment opportunity at this time. It's like putting your money into bonds. You better have a lot of money because bonds are paying nothing. So when we use the events of the past to kind of predict the future of the market, we have to assume the market is going to keep on working pretty much the same way. And that is stocks are going to get overpriced and then they're going to drop because they're way too expensive. They're going to drop. There's going to create a lot of fear and then they're going to get underpriced way under their value. Ben Graham used to say that the market um, on the short term is like a voting machine. It's basically everybody voting in the short term just emotionally uh, for their favorite companies. It tends to go way up or they get scared. It goes way down. But in the long run, the market is a weighing machine. In the long run, it will always price companies where they should be. So think about that. Try to predict the market. It's just a little bit like trying to read tea leaves. There just is a substantial chance we could have a recession. Sure. There's also a substantial chance we won't. Either way, if you understand the principles of rule one investing that Ben Graham, Warren Buffett, and Charlie Munger laid down, you're going to find opportunities to increase your long term wealth everywhere. You just may not be able to buy them right now. Rule one investors don't fear market crashes. What we do is we stack up our cash as the market is really getting overpriced simply because we can't find great companies to buy. So the cash naturally stacks up right now. Warren Buffett has $140 billion stacked up. He just doesn't know what to do with it because everything is overpriced. We know downturns what we would call an economic storm provides us with incredible buying opportunities. Buffett says when you get an economic storm every 10 years or so, right? We probably have one coming up pretty soon. It's going to rain gold, but you got to know what the gold is. And when you know how to look at the market objectively, you're going to have a huge advantage over other investors because objectively you probably should be putting your money in cash right now. Everything's very expensive. Right. And then objectively, when it goes on sale, you're going to buy everything. It's very just straightforward. And if we get a recession or a market crash, we're going to be able to keep a cool head while other people are panicking. Now, I want you to be prepared for whatever 2020 brings by doing the research to find the great companies for you. And then you're going to be ready when those companies go on sale. Preparation plus opportunity equals massive financial success. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Do you think the market will crash in 2020? Leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. If you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about the market potentially crashing in 2020, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. And thanks again for watching.